The Empress Maria Feodorovna was renowned for her passionate love of jewels in all their splendor. While it was customary for empresses to shine in attire adorned with precious gems, Maria Feodorovna embraced this radiance with her notable fervor. Perhaps no other Russian empress left behind such an extensive collection of resplendent ceremonial portraits. It's worth noting that the artist, while composing the ceremonial portrait, had no influence over the choice of jewels adorning his subject. Therefore, all that we see in these ceremonial portraits reflects the personal selection of the empress, who sought to be remembered by future generations as bedecked in imperial treasures. Upon arriving in Russia in the autumn of 1866, Grand Duchess Maria Feodorovna, due to her status during the wedding festivities, was adorned with jewels as customary. Following the wedding ceremony, the next day ushered in another tradition, the groom's wedding gift to his bride. This gift also included among the crown jewels passed down through inheritance. In October 1866, the future Alexander III presented his august spouse with a brooch souvenir adorned with emeralds, sapphires, topazes and diamonds. The first emerald weighed 56 carats, the second 35 carats. The sapphire 12 carats, two pink topazes, 53 diamonds, 74 double diamonds, 81 single diamonds and 370 rose-cut diamonds. According to the testament of Empress Maria Feodorovna, now graciously bestowed by the reigning emperor upon Empress Maria Alexandrovna on the following day of their Imperial Majesty's wedding ceremony, it is to serve for future times as a similar gift from the heir apparent to his august spouse. Thus began the formation of the renowned jewellery casket of Empress Maria Feodorovna. One of the most luxurious jewellery creations was the Sapphire Perua. To appreciate the beauty and brilliance of her jewels, one can turn to the portrait of the Empress painted by the artist Konstantin Makovsky. Interestingly, the sketch for it was made during the celebrations of the wedding of Grand Duchess Maria Alexandrovna, sister of Alexander III, and Prince Alfred, son of Queen Victoria of Great Britain. The Perua looks remarkably impressive. Judging by its style, either it or most of its elements were created during the Napoleonic era. Specialists believe that the Perua was a wedding gift to Maria Alexandrovna of Hesse, wife of Emperor Alexander II and mother of Alexander III. During those times, a distinctive feature of Russian jewels was their ability to transform. Almost all elements of the Perua were detachable, allowing them to be rearranged and combined differently often transforming the jewellery into something entirely new. The sapphire perua comprised a kokoshnik tiara, a necklace, at least two brooches, and a corsage ornament. The tiara featured a large central sapphire and eight smaller ones set in a golden frame, adorned with diamonds. The top of the tiara was adorned with diamonds, detachable to transform it into an elegant riviere. Additionally, the tiara was embellished with several jewels originally created for Catherine the Great's dress adornment, which were removable and owned by the Diamond Fund. Traditionally, the centerpiece of the perua is the tiara, but in my opinion, the primacy and main role belong to the necklace. It was so complex that it's hard to tell what prevailed, jewelry or engineering artistry. The necklace consisted of a plethora of sapphires and diamonds of various shapes. The central sapphire weighed 159.25 carats, while the remaining 15 totaled 150 carats. There were 414 diamonds weighing a combined 204 carats. Now, onto the engineering details. The necklace had a detachable central pendant with a sapphire, as well as upper and lower diamond riviere elements. The corsage ornament featured a large cushion-shaped sapphire and a smaller, relatively speaking, pear-shaped one in a diamond setting. This component of the perua is clearly visible in Maria Feodorovna's portrait. The brooches consisted of large oval and round sapphires, also set in diamond frames. It's quite likely that there were more fibulae, but information about them hasn't survived. Tracking their whereabouts today seems virtually impossible. The Romanovs own too many similar items. The fact that the elements of the perua were easily disassembled played a cruel trick on them. Many components were repurposed for other ornaments, separated, and it would be difficult to find them now. For instance, regarding the tiara, it was almost certainly divided during Maria Feodorovna's time. It's highly likely that the frame was used for one of her diamond tiaras. 
and similar sapphires appeared in other adornments. It's confirmed that the necklace from the Perua remained intact at the time of the 1917 revolution. It appears in the famous photograph capturing the Romanov's jewellery table. However, what happened to it afterward remains a mystery. Another fascinating adornment was the Grand Diamond Perua. Crown jewels could only be worn on special occasions, after which they had to be returned to the Romanov dynasty's treasury. So let's explore what this magical paro included. Firstly, there was a diamond gold Russian necklace with silver elements. This transformer ornament could be converted from a necklace into an unusual tiara. The crystals of antique cutting brought from India and Brazil shimmered like stars. Equally aristocratic and regal was the pearl diamond necklace. Each large pearl resembling a droplet was paired with a skillfully crafted diamond pendant. The perua was complemented by a pendant and a brooch, distinguished not only by lovely pearls but also by rare pink diamonds. And finally, the epitome of jewellery art was the exquisite diadem made of natural crystals and pearls, delicate nacreous drops. Maria Frederica, accustomed to less extravagant luxury in her homeland, was initially astonished by the abundance of jewels and the multitude of dresses at the Russian court. Maria Fyodorovna's most beloved pearl ornament was a brooch, crafted by a jeweler using three enormous pearls. This brooch was presented to the Princess Dagmar by her future spouse, Grand Duke Alexander Alexandrovich, upon their engagement. Despite their marriage initially being a matter of state necessity, the Empress cherished her husband deeply. Alexander III and Maria Fyodorovna enjoyed a relatively short but incredibly happy married life. Unlike most Russian emperors, Alexander III never betrayed his wife. Maria Fyodorovna kept the brooch given to her by Alexander as an engagement gift until the very end. The Empress wore this brooch as a pendant on a black ribbon around her neck. This particular ornament can be seen in the portrait of Maria Fyodorovna, painted by the artist Heinrich Angeli. After Maria Fyodorovna's chest ended up in England, Grand Duchess Zenia Alexandrovna sold the pearl brooch to Lydia Kudyarova, a poor Russian emigrant who married the oil magnate Henry Detterding. Lydia willingly purchased the jewel and later turned it into a necklace. Maria Fyodorovna not only loved jewellery, but also small trinkets such as boxes, snuff boxes and porcelain items. She favoured products made of lapis lazuli, which were purchased for her at the Urbit Fair. The prototype of the first Fabergé Easter egg, commissioned by Alexander III as a gift for his wife, was made by an unknown French jeweller in the 1720s. Three similar Easter eggs were crafted. They are kept at the Museum of Art History in Vienna, the golden egg with an enameled yolk at the Dresden State Art Collections, until 1924, and the egg of Duchess Wilhelmine at Rosenborg Castle in Copenhagen. This five-part golden egg, made in France around 1720, was a gift from Charlotte d'Orléans from Britain. It is assumed that the egg of Duchess Wilhelmina, which Alexander III and Maria Feodorovna saw at an arts and crafts exhibition in Copenhagen in 1879, and was chosen as a prototype or idea for the Fabergé Commission. This French Easter egg from the early 18th century, from the collection of the Danish royal family, had an ivory shell and consisted of two halves. Inside was a surprise, a golden egg. One end had a recess for a perfume bottle, and the other end had a hinged lid in the form of an enameled yolk. When this lid was opened, a brown hen surprise sitting in a diamond nest became visible. Inside the hen, in turn, was a tiny crown with diamonds and pearls. Whether this was the inspiration or not, Fabergé did not copy but created an original work of jewellery art.